Hello, and welcome to the second devlog for my game that still doesn't have a name. Before we get started, I wanted to thank everyone who watched the first devlog. When I originally posted it, I was expecting maybe one person to watch it, so I was very surprised when the channel grew from 0 to 18 subs off of that one video. Anyway, I'll stop wasting time and jump into the actual devlog content now. From where we left off in the previous video, I had implemented an item pickup script that altered players' stats when they collide with the item on the floor. This is now working in a way I'm happy with for now. Moving away from scripts for a second, let's talk about what I've wasted most of my time on for the last week. I'm not happy with the player sprite. In the last video, I mentioned it was my first time working with pixel art. Because of this, making and animating these sprites in a way that I'm happy with is taking a long time. So for this reason, instead of taking the time to further develop my pixel art skills, I'm learning a new drawing program called Krita. Here I'm redrawing a new version of the player character. It is now not a cat anymore, it is a frog. Why I made this change? Not exactly 100% sure. There's no real benefit in doing this. It's more of like a horizontal transition than anything else. When importing the sprite into Unity, I broke the sprite into individual body parts. That way, I can animate the character using Unity's animation timeline. I've created an idle and walking animation for the player, as well as an on-hit animation for when the player takes damage. And because I changed the player sprite, it also made sense to change the player's attack sprite. I decided to turn the projectile into a bubble, because that would make sense since it's a frog now. And that is where any of the theme's cohesion ends. But now we've run into an issue. Listen, I'm really happy with how the rat enemy turned out when I made it in A sprite, but now it doesn't match with the player character, so I'm biting the bullet and redrawing it as well. I tried my best to replicate the rat in the same way when I originally made it with pixel art, but I wasn't happy with how it turned out. I'm not sure if I've lost my mind, but for the second attempt, I made the rat a humanoid. I think I'm much happier with how this version turned out, and maybe I can integrate this into the story of the game in some way. Here you can see a walking and on hit animation for the rat. Uh, also, while we're talking about the rat, I'm not sure if the rats will always fire projectiles in the future or if they're just going to chase the player around. Not that that has anything to do with the animations, I'm just throwing thoughts around right now. And of course, because of the move away from pixel art, I also had to change the on hit code that I had added. Now that I'm just triggering an animation, I don't need an I enumerator to toggle the color changes between the sprites. So yeah, a little bit of foreshadowing here, as I'm sure you can tell, there is going to be a lot of me redoing sprites in this episode. However, I do think this change is for the better, and I would rather make this change now when I only have a couple of sprites, rather than in the future when there could be 50 different enemy sprites. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the new hand-drawn sprite style. I started working on a new enemy type. The orbiter wanders around the room, firing projectiles in a radius around itself. Now, I know I just made that cool intro for the orbiter, and I like how the orbiter enemy sprite looks. I even made a walking animation for it. However, after thinking about it, I personally feel like this isn't going to match the aesthetic of the game. For me, it's a little too close to being Lovecraftian. So in the end, I ended up making a new enemy sprite to replace the orbiter, and it's a spider instead. I also think that the spider makes more sense because the main location of the game is going to be taking place in a forest where spiders are, and a sort of squid monster uh, is a little more random. I'm happy with how the spider sprite turned out. Currently, the spider enemy fires multiple projectiles simultaneously in a circle, same as the orbiter was going to. Eventually, I want those projectiles to temporarily slow the player, almost like it's shooting out a web. 
I also eventually want those projectiles to curve instead of flying straight out. If anyone has any idea on how to do this, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I was trying for a while to get the uh, projectiles to curve, but I just couldn't get them to work, so I figured ah, it'll be fine if they just fly straight for a little bit. Although, currently the wandering movement script for the spider is having some issues. It is supposed to change directions when it collides with an obstacle or a wall, but currently if it collides with a wall it just slams its face into it for a little while. Can't make it! Can't make it! The shit's stuck! Out of my way, son! Door stuck! Door stuck! Please! Now let's talk about items for a second. In the last video, I used this item sprite as an example. Taking inspiration from some of Binding of Isaac's items, where the item style is like a little gross, you know, some of the items are like body parts or something else, uh, this item was supposed to look like a severed thumb. But after jumping in a call with some of my friends, they all informed me that it actually just looked like a penis. Uh, but that was okay because I planned on redrawing the item sprite anyway because it was pixel art and I wanted to switch it to make it match the player sprite. Currently, the items on the floor don't look dynamic and eye-catching enough, so I added a hover to the item and gave it an animated light effect. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the light effect because currently the pickup is automatic, but eventually, when a player walks over an item, I want the player to press a key to pick up the item. Also, when they walk over it, the item should get a white border indicating that you are picking up that specific item. There should also be a tooltip indicating the effect of the item on the player. And finally, I've saved the best for last. I added a dash ability for the player. When the player is actively dashing, any collision with enemies is ignored, granting the player invincibility during the duration of the dash. I also added in a trail component to the player during the dash. I still need to tweak the specifics like dash speed, duration, and cooldown time. Speaking of cooldown time, I still need to add in a bar to indicate when the dash is on cooldown. And that's all I have for this devlog. This devlog was quite a bit shorter compared to the previous one, that's partially because I tried to show more interesting footage of the game, rather than me explaining my code for 15 minutes. While I wanted to fit more development work into this devlog, I didn't want to wait too long between videos. I'm trying to keep a release schedule around every 2-3 to three weeks if possible. And because this devlog had a lot of visual updates, I thought it would be nice to show it in a group. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in another 2-ish weeks.